to Seafood 101. Hi, I'm Ken Saunderson with the Seattle Propeller Club, and today we're with Tony Del Ponte, who is the General Counsel and Assistant Corporate Secretary of Pacific Seafoods Group. Thanks for joining us today, Tony. Well, Ken, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Tony, why don't we start by talking a little bit about Pacific Seafood Group, its company, and how long you've been in business? Sure. Uh, well, Pacific Seafood is one of the largest seafood companies in North America, and we're a little unique in that we do a little bit of everything on the seafood value chain. We do wild harvest, where we're actually out there fishing, and we have 10 of our own boats, although we partnered with more than 800 independently owned vessels last year. We farm, and we farm both uh, shellfish products, oysters, clams, and mussels, as well as fin fish. We raise about 14 million pounds of native Columbia River steelhead in the Columbia River through a partnership with the Quoville Indian tribe in Eastern Washington. We process those farmed and uh, wild harvest products where we turn them into something that you or I might see at like a Whole Foods or a Fred Meyer. And then we uh, also distribute in both locally where we have distribution hubs that send products out to restaurants and retailers, as well as nationally and internationally. Um, and so that participation in every single part of the seafood value chain gives us a really rather unique view of the seafood sector overall. Um, the company itself is about 80 years old now. We were founded in 1941 by Croatian immigrants and are now on our third generation of family ownership based out of Portland, Oregon. That's where our headquarters is. Wow, you really do cover the entire spectrum. I think it's really cool that it's a family owned operation and you really have that connection to the community. That's actually what we're most proud of. We say uh, that our, our mission is to feed the world the healthiest proteins on the planet. But you know, what I like to tell people is that our passion are the coastal communities that we partner with. In most of the towns where we have locations, we're one of the largest employers. And commercial fishing activity is one of, if not the most, uh, biggest contributor to net earnings. Um, in a lot of coastal locations, you'll have tourism as another significant contributor to net earnings. But what makes commercial fishing different than tourism is that tourism, at least in the Pacific Northwest, at the coast, more of a three-month out of the year kind of business. Commercial fishing and maritime activity is a year-round economic engine that provides family wage jobs for people to live in the community, send their kids to school in the community, buy groceries in the community, and provide that economic base that's necessary to support the tourist activity that comes in for a few months out of the year. It really supplements what commercial fishing in the maritime industry provides. And it's nice to provide that huge economic impact. You have about 3,000 team members across 41 facilities in 11 states. That's a huge economic impact. Talk about the workforce uh, efforts there and the careers that are available at Pacific Seafoods. Sure. Well, it, we, are, we are a very large business, and so we have a lot of different jobs that are available at every single part of uh, the spectrum. Commercial fishing is a pretty unique industry in that it's one of the few that I know of where you can make six figures with a high school diploma, which is just shocking to me in a lot of other areas, but it's, it's really, really impressive. Um, and so you have the, the commercial fishing job. You've got work on farms where we actually farm oyster products and long lines or sepa baskets and there's work out in the tidelands. We have work in the processing locations. And these are actually pretty high tech, sophisticated manufacturing facilities with increasingly sophisticated equipment. And so in addition to the processing jobs, we have equipment installation and maintenance and welding and electricians, as well as uh, operations management, logistics, and uh, HR professionals that are staffing all these facilities. And then you get into our distribution spaces and we have uh, transportation jobs and warehousing type roles and positions, just like you would see in uh, an Amazon facility. And then, of course, in the corporate space, we have all the different ancillary services that are needed to support a business of our size. So I'm obviously, uh, by training, a, a lawyer. Um, we have communication specialists and marketing folks, and we have, um, we have IT professionals, uh, HR professionals, uh, finance professionals. It's, it runs the gamut of different offerings and different positions. And really, if I can't think of one 
particular uh, type of skill set that we don't have. You might think, well, you know, where do you get into like scientists? And we have several food scientists on our staff, as well as um, engineering folks that are designing equipment systems or testing wastewater. So it gets into a pretty much every single career path you could possibly think of, except for maybe someone like, you know, Indiana Jones. We don't have a, <laughs> we don't have an archaeologist on staff. It's a great story and a great career opportunity. You know, one of the things I've heard about Pacific Seafoods is that you're recognized for your commitment to sustainability, community, the environment. Why is that so important to your company? I think it's important to every uh, fishing company. If you don't take care of the environment, that's where our product comes from. That'd be a very short-sighted business plan. The fact that most seafood companies are family-owned, family-operated, and we want to have the ability to you know, transition the company to the next generation means that we have a vested stake in managing resources as efficiently and sustainably as possible. And fortunately, in the United States, we do a very, very good job of that. We have a very robust management system in place under something called the Magnus and Stevens Act with regional councils that are able to adapt to local problems and local fisheries in real time, such that we are managing them in a sustainable way for the very, very long term. And as a company at like Pacific Seafood that is domestic harvest, domestic farm, domestic processing, and predominantly domestic sales, um, that's what makes it very, very easy for us to say that we're one of the most sustainable uh, industries in the fishing world. We operate in a, in a space that is regulated, in an environment that has a vested stake in remaining sustainable, and we are proud to maintain that sustainable legacy. You know, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but I'd love to explore a little bit further. Your, your products are everywhere. You can get them at a retail store, you can get them at a, uh, a wholesale, I mean, you can get them in restaurants, you can get them at, uh, you know, through your website. Talk a little bit about the diversity of products that you've got and where I can get that delicious seafood. Yeah, well, basically everywhere. Uh, seafood used to be thought of as like a commodity, right? You sell fish and you might go get it at the dock. Really, seafood now is just like any other food product and you can buy it in a variety of different areas. You have retail, and we talk about grocery stores. You have food service, and there's restaurants all over the country that stock uh, seafood. There's also now a movement towards direct-to-consumer goods. Um, and food and beverage is the largest and fastest growing form of consumer packaged goods now in the online space, post-COVID. Um, so we at Pacific Seafood do all three. We sell to grocery stores and you might see our products at um, familiar places like Whole Foods or Kroger or Fred Meyer, um, all of those locations, Costco. We sell to restaurants um, and we distribute locally, but in any of the states that we have a distribution facility, we're selling to restaurants there. We import and export all over the world. So you can find our products in more than I think 60 different countries now. And then we also have a direct consumer uh, shop.pacificseafood.com, where folks can go and buy fresh seafood products in the online space, or frozen seafood products online. So we'll, we'll distribute directly to your home. So you can find our products pretty much wherever you are. Well, you're making me hungry, I gotta tell you. I love your passion for the company industry. Why are you optimistic about the future of the fishing and seafood industry? Well, it's got a bright future. Let me tell you why. Human populations are growing. We're supposed to have 10 billion people worldwide by 2050. Humans like to eat and they have to eat protein. Seafood is the healthiest protein offering that's available. Um, no, no insult or injury meant intended for the beef and the pork and the poultry folks of the world. I, I like a nice steak too, but seafood is a lean, healthy protein and all the science backs that up. So as the population grows, the demand for seafood will only increase, particularly as consumers are more aware of the impact that food products have on our individual well-being and they want to eat more healthy proteins and fishes. Um, so there's always there's a built-in demand and need. I'm optimistic about the future because we have and are now managing resources in a very, very sustainable way to make sure they're going to continue to be here for generations to come. And as those populations grow and the demand increases, there's some very cool things happening uh, on the farming front. So there will always be an important place for wild caught 
and harvested products. But as the population grows and the only oceans can only sustainably provide so much, we're now supplementing that with farm seafood products, just like we farm cattle or farm chickens or pork. Uh, folks are now farming seafood and we're producing that sustainable protein for future generations. And that's how the industry is growing at this point. Wild harvests have largely been static since the 90s, but aquaculture or farm seafood is the fastest growing form of food production worldwide. It's the most efficient form of food production in terms of feed to conversion ratios. It's the most environmentally uh, efficient form of food production in terms of uh, methane gas and carbon greenhouse gas emissions. So it's the seafood industry is growing. It's uh, vibrant. There's all kinds of new technology and it is necessary in order to support our growing populations worldwide. So it, it's a great career uh, to be in. At the end of the day, we're feeding people and there's a place for us to, to grow and, and get better as we do it. What a great story. The future is indeed bright for our fishing and seafood industry. Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.